Um, this section here is part two of our fascination with the Pythagorean 345 triangle. We just showed that it can be drawn, the 345 triangle was drawn just using straight lines, but I have two other methods now where we just use arcs of the circle. And for this five by five grid, I'm gonna draw two arcs. One is a semicircle and one is called a quarter circle. So to do that, I've, um, I could just draw it freehand, but I just thought I'd let you know that you can just get any string that you like and get a piece of chalk. Um, here's a piece of chalk. And I, I'm gonna make it like a um, uh, radius. So what I do is I, by holding the, the string, I'm gonna be, I'm able to draw an arc at any distance I want. But first of all, I need to know where my compass point is. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So this distance is five units. We'll call that five. So it's a square of five by five. And all I need is one midpoint. Just by knowing this midpoint here, that's one, two and a half. Just, just by knowing that midpoint of five, which is 2.5, I'm gonna construct my first arc a semicircle. So I put my chalk in there. Um, I, put, I put my finger here, get it right. And then before you draw, you just, you always check before you do your first line, because you, what's important is getting the tension right. So I know I can go like that, and I just do one swoop of an arc. And you can see I have drawn a very simple semicircle. Okay, so I'm now, I don't need any more midpoints. I've done this midpoint. All I need now is this corner point here. And where this, this the distance of this um, arc is going to be the, the, the length of the side. So my the distance, the compass that I open up will be five units. And where this intersects the original semicircle is our critical point. So I'm just going to come over here. And to do this properly, I have to put the chalk in my left hand. I'm actually ambidextrous. It's great to be ambidextrous because it means you can draw with your both right and left. And it's very good for balancing the hemispheres of the brain. So again, I... I take my compass and I'm going to put the point there. So and I put my thumb here, so I've stretched it. I've got the tension right. And before I draw it, as I explained, you've got to get the tension right and don't let this point move. So I've got my tension right. And when I'm ready, I just do it all in one go like this. Just one swoop of the arc and we've done it. So, um, so now, so we don't need the string. So this is our critical point here. I'm going to work in another color, um, pink. I work with pink. Just by knowing this point here, which is identical to that point there, when we did it with straight lines, we, we had that point there. But this is a superior diagram because two arcs is superior than drawing three straight lines. So this is a gem but we have an even better one coming. But now I need to construct my um, three, four, five triangle. Um, so what I need to do is that from here, I'm gonna draw a line from here to this midpoint over here. So one, two, three, four, five, there's my midpoint. So I draw that in and this is three units. This length here is three. Um, that's three units because if I come in from there, that's one. That's 1.2.3. Um, over here is four. So from this point here, that gives me my 90 degree angle. So that's my 90 degree angle. That's, um, you can, one, two, three, four. That's one, two, three, four units. I'll put four. And this last one is the hypotenuse, which is five units long. So we'll call that five units. So this distance, yeah, um, three, four, five, that's it. And so obviously this distance is the same length as that. Okay, so um, I w I'm going to do this again. I want to show you a more elegant method of how it's actually drawn. So I'm going to, I'm going to lift this, I'm going to replace, have the same grid. I've got the same grid. And this we'll call it version two. And this version that I'm going to show you is actually a bit more elegant 
than what we've done. And this was given to me um, by my um, uh, by my friend, Callum Coates. Um, when I teach, I was teaching at a Nexus conference in Sunshine Coast, Australia in 2008. And I'm with my friend Callum Coates. He's a high level architect and professor. And we're having a coffee together and we're scribbling on napkins um, um, ge geometries. He says, Jane, look, here's a better, here's a way to create the three, four, five triangle with two arcs of the circle in it. And this actually wasn't a five by five grid. This was just like a one by one grid. So I'm going to show you what Callum did. Um, and this one I really love because that diagram I just showed you doesn't exist anywhere. I've spent a long time trying to find this on the internet it doesn't exist this is something that mates and colleagues and professors share with each other and it's um it's a transmission of knowledge and since since i've had this diagram for 12 years i'm really excited to show you that, that the power of sketches and information it, it, um it influences us to share this knowledge to others so this is callum coates's main book called living energies and callum is a world-renowned architect mystic mason of the highest order and he was um hired um to translate four books by the, the the man who gave us water um technology called victor schauberger so victor schauberger um wrote four books and callum coates translated them from the german so nature as teacher and then we've got the water wizard the, the water wizard, the, the extraordinary properties of n natural water. And then here's another one called the fertile earth, nature's energies in agriculture. Um, this is about soil fertilization and forestry. And there was a final one on the energy uh, evolution. And this, this is about harvesting the free energy from nature. So I just wanted to show you that um, this, this little tidbit of information has come from extraordinary um, mathematicians and geometers who just love sharing knowledge. So this is also a, a tribute to Callum Coates and Victor Schauberger because this knowledge is meant to come out and, and be great when the children start doing this as worksheets. So I'm going to do the two arcs again. So I, I need to get my string again. Um, I'll, I'll do it in orange. So I'm going to draw this quarter circle here from here to there the distance is five um so i put i put my finger about here so i've got the tension right just check it just check the tension Oop, push too hard on it the tension's not right you can get the tension right but the press the pressure the pressure's got to be right so we put the pen the compass there and we go through, I have to go through that point from here and we do it in one swoop of the arc. So we've got one arc and I need to do, um, I might just do this one by hand because this one's a semicircle. So if I put in my compass here, I might be able to do it like this. If I put my compass here, Gotta get the tension right. So you can do this in and I'll do it the other way, swap hands, being ambidextrous. So you can see here we've got a beautiful semicircle. And where they intersect here at this point gives us um, our next gives us our next triangle. I'll just draw this by hand. You can see clearly here that this is one, two, three. When we did the other diagram, it was on an angle, but this diagram is superior to all the others because I can clearly count one, two, three units. And as I go from here, because it's a five by five grid, I can clearly see that this is one, two, three, four. And obviously, according to Pythagoras' theorem, um, this must be five. So how simple and elegant and beautiful is this construction done with two simple arcs. Um, I hope you enjoyed this knowledge. And there's a third one to come where we're going to find where is the golden phi relationship inside the 345 triangle.